homework on Wednesday night that really wanted us to solve something that you couldn't do via common, common basis. Like we solved exponential equations using common basis before Christmas. The reality is, and I told you this then, is that that's a very convenient thing. You also solve by common basis in Algebra 1. It's a very convenient thing. Most things can't be done that way. This is one that can be done that way because 4 can be written with a base of 2 and 8 can be written with, with a base of 2. So I'm going to re-solve this by the method of common basis to remind you how that looked. But then I'm also going to pretend as if that's not an option because most times it won't be and I'm going to show you this new approach to solving. So the method of common basis says rewrite your 4 as 2 squared to the x power. Rewrite your 8 as 2 cubed. Your exponent rules say when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So that's just 2 to the 2x equals 2 to the third. And just like last night, if you have a log on both sides, you can cross it out. Here, if you have the common base on both sides sitting all by itself, you can cross it out. So we're just solving 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 3 halves, and that's your answer. And you could check that. 4 to the 3 halves power equals 8. I just went back to the original and plugged, plugged that in. Okay? Under the log approach method, which like I said once and I'll say it a thousand times, the majority of them are not going to be able to be done with the method of common basis. That's an algebra one topic. We review it because it fits in and it, and it makes sense conceptually, but we have to realize that most things aren't going to be that convenient. So here's how the log approach works. Yesterday when we had logs on both sides, we could just cross them out, right? Yes? Are you with me? Likewise, we can actually just add them in. I can take the log of both sides. If two sides are equal, and I take the log of the left side, and I take the log of the right side, they'll still be equal. So I'm just going to take the log of both sides. Now normally I wouldn't rewrite this step, but just to make it look prettier for the first time doing it, so you can really wrap your head around what's happening, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the log of both sides. Remembering that this was not originally there. And they should still be equal. That, that third property of logs, when you're condensing, there's the addition turns into multiplication and the subtraction turns into division. The most powerful one, though, is really not the condensing. It's the exponent one. This exponent can be rewritten out in front. And essentially, when you're trying to solve for a variable that's locked up in an exponent, the only way to get an exponent out of there, a variable out of the exponent, is to take the log and use this property. Because this property gets that exponent so that it's no longer an exponent. And now I can just get x all by itself. Log of 4 is just some crazy number. I'm going to keep it and just divide both sides by log 4. So x equals the log of 8 divided by the log of 4. And we can just type that right into your calculator. The log of 8 divided by the log of 4. We already know what the answer should be because we solved it using the other method. 1.5, which is the same as 3 halves. Sometimes your answers will be written in log format and sometimes it'll actually be worked out. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. I will tell you this. Your answer might also be log base 4 of 8. If it was a multiple choice, why is log base 4 of 8 the same as log of 8 over the log of 4? Can I do 
a flashcard on this because if I didn't, I should. I gotta revisit these and add some. I didn't. 55. Change of base formula. If I have to rewrite log base B of A, right? Since most of our calculators don't do the log base functionality yet, how do I have to type something like that in? Right. Log, not, not base the second time. Log of A, but you got it, divided by log of B. That makes sense? If you wanted to do it with numbers, it would be if I did log base 2 of 7, that you'd have to type into your calculator doing the log of 7 over the log of 2. That's the change of base formula. So even though our answer came up this way, it is the equivalent of that. Because the change of base formula would make this the log of 8 over the log of 4. So you just have to be prepared that you might get one answer in log form, but they might present it a little bit differently in your options. Because of the change of base formula, there's different ways to present things. Good? Any questions? Okay. Um, so on these solving ones, we have the variables in the exponent. I'm just going to take the log of both sides again. So it'll be the log of 5 to the x equals the log of 18. I'm going to bring my x out in front. So now it's no longer trapped in an exponent. And divide both sides by the log of 5. Which, by the way, cannot be condensed at all. This isn't, you condense two logs that are being subtracted into a single log of division, but two logs being divided does not condense into anything. That's the answer. So if I check this log of 18 divided by log of 5, it's going to be probably an ugly number, but let's say it's approximately 1.8. Yes? Ch you can check that in your answer. You can say 5 to the 1.8 power should be 18. It's not going to be 18 exactly, though, agreed? Because I just rounded it. So it's close. But if I, if I really wanted to, I could do 5 and raise it to that number exactly. And 5 raised to that number should be 18 exactly. Yes? Okay. So I'll skip those. We'll just move to the next section because those are all the same. Um, this is just slightly more complicated because the exponent is more than just an x. But that doesn't matter. I still have my variable that I'm trying to solve for trapped in an exponent. And the only way to get it out is to take the log of both sides. So it's the log of 6 to the x plus 3 equals the log of 50. Here's the thing to be careful of. Because that exponent is a binomial, when you bring it out in front, keep it in parentheses, right? We don't have it in parentheses right now because it's already very small and written up there in the exponent, so we know that it's grouped together. But when you bring this out in front, keep it in parentheses. Still divide over your log of 6. And then we just have one additional step, which is what, Owen? And we do that by what? Subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals the log of 50 divided by the log of 6 minus 3. Which, for the record, because of that change of base formula potential, that might also be written as log base 6 of 50 minus 3 just so you are aware of the two different ways to write that. 
Now, most of your calculators are only going to allow this. Log of 50 divided by log of 6 gives me that. But then I have to subtract 3 from it. And there's my answer, negative 0.816658 equals negative 0.816658. And again, do you want to check that? Go back up into your original. 6 to this crazy number, well, I should put it in parentheses, this crazy number plus 3 should give me 50. Good? <coughs> Let's jump down to exercise 6. We'll just do the 1 in each section, then if we have t time, we'll go back and look at more. Um, in six, before you can log both sides, your exponential expression has to be by itself. That would be the two to the x power. We haven't run into this yet because the six to the x-ish power was already by itself. Certainly here, the five to the x power was already by itself. Here it's not. So we first have to isolate it. So I'm going to add the three over. divide by 4 and then what Angie? Log both sides. Yeah. So it's going to be log of 2 to the x equals log of 5. Vince, what comes next? Move the x in front of the log. Very good. And Eric, what comes last? Good. So x equals log of 5 divided by log of 2. Now, the way this one is phrased, find the solution to each of the following <coughs> in terms of a log with the same base as the exponential equation. What is the base of that exponent? 2. So they really want us to write this as a log with a base of 2, and that's just that change of base formula piece. That's just knowing to change it into a log with a base of 2 of 5. Log base 2 of 5 by the change of base formula is the same thing as log of 5 over log of 2. Good? Okay. All right. This chapter gets real heavy on word problems. We're going to start with a general formula, which you, unfortunately, have to memorize. So this exponential growth decay model, I'm going to write basic exponential growth decay formula. This is a formula you have to memorize. If you don't memorize it, you really have no chance. So A is going to stand for the final amount. A sub 0 stands for the initial amount. Okay, so Something like populations will do this with a lot. You have a starting population. Populations usually don't grow linearly. Like they don't add five people every year. They actually grow by a percentage every year, even if it's small. So there's your starting population, let's say, and your final population. Your parentheses is always one. And then it's plus or minus, depending on growing or decaying. So if your population is growing, you would use a plus. If it's shrinking, you would use a, a minus. R is your rate as a decimal. And then T is the amount of time you're waiting from start to finish, from start of population to end of population. The over P is a new concept too. Sometimes they'll tell you that it grows by 5% every one year. So the P would be one year. Sometimes, though, they'll tell you it grows by 5% every three months. 
then P would be three months. So P is like the period of time that it takes to grow by whatever percentage they tell you. Does that make sense? Okay. T and P are both lengths of time. T is the amount of time you wait start to finish. R, the rate, if it's increasing every three months, that's your period of time it takes to increase by your rate. So that's a, a new piece that we'll get into. So all that's outlined at the top for you. So in number four, a biologist is modeling the population of bats on a tropical island. It's just a little bit of fluff to give you context. No numbers can we pull from that. When he first starts observing them, there are 104 bats. That's your A sub zero. That's your starting population. The biologist believes that the bat population is growing at a rate of 3%. So how do you change a percent to a decimal? What's 3% as a decimal? 0 0.03. Not 0 0.3. 0 0.3 would be 30%. 0 0.03. And per year tells you that P equals one year. So they want us to write an equation for the number of bats, B of T, so that's our final number of bats, as a function of the number of years, T, since the biologist started observing them. So we're going to get the number of bats, T, so that's kind of like my final amount, equals my initial amount, which is 104, parentheses, 1, was this growing or shrinking? growing plus 0.03 and we're doing it as a function of the number of years t over one year since t is in years and one is in years already we're good there we don't have any changing of units to deal with so that equation if we plug in five years it'll tell us what the population has grown to after five years of growth if we plug in 10 years, we'll figure out what that is. So part B wants us to algebraically determine the number of years it will take for the bat population to reach 200. So when they give us 200 here, they're giving us the final population, right? Starts at 104, they want to know when will it become 200. So they're giving us the final number. They're giving us that that's 200. And we have to solve for T. This is fantastic. I thought I only had seven minutes left five minutes ago. Turns out we have 15. It is our lucky day. So as far as all of this, these word problems will be, you just have to read and reread and reread and reread and figure out what numbers go in for what variables and things to look out for. You'll see, I'll see people say, we're waiting for the bat population to reach 200 and they'll plug 200 in for time. No, 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 we're not waiting 200 years, right? We wanna know when will the final bat population be 200. So just making sure you're reading carefully and plugging numbers in for the right variable, and then it should be fairly straightforward. Because this is just, I mean, we can clean this up before we start solving. One plus 0 .03 in parentheses is just 1.03, and t divided by one is just t. So this is just an exponential equation that we were solving on the front. It's just this exponential equation has meaning behind it, really. We're, we're going to use logs to get an, a variable out of an exponent, but we can't do that until our exponential expression is all by itself, and right now that 104 is in the way. What operation should I use to get rid of 104 Lucas B? No. If it was 104 plus 1.03 to the T, you would subtract that 104 over. But this is 104 times the parentheses. So, yeah, so division. So divide the 104 out of there. 
Now, this is kind of up to you. This might be an ugly number, 200 divided by 104. Agreed, ugly number. If you don't wanna write that down fully and completely, I actually wouldn't because even that is rounded and we're gonna to have to do follow-up calculations with that and I don't like to do follow-up calculations with rounded numbers. It could throw off your answer significantly in an exponential problem. So I'm just gonna leave this 200 over 104 and focus my energy over here in getting that T out of the exponent, which is taking the log of both sides. Yes, so log of, and you might wanna throw this in parentheses now that we're taking the log of it, equals the log of 1.03 to the T power. So we got the exponential expression all by itself. We took the log of both sides. We bring the variable out in front, or the exponent out in front. And then to get T all by itself, we divide both sides by the log of 1.03. So it's a more cumbersome answer. It just takes a little bit more space to write is all I mean by that because we have the log of a fraction over the log of 1.03. And with a word problem, you usually are gonna wanna do that out because as they say, round your answer to the nearest year. So we're gonna find out time. We're gonna find out how many years did it take for all this to go down. So the log of 100 divided by 104, uh, no, 200 divided by 104. And then that answer is getting divided by the log of 1.03. Follow how I'm typing that in? There's the log of my fraction divided by the log of 1.03. Took 22 years to the nearest year. That wasn't the question though. They didn't say how many years did it take, so this is just a formality. They said, what year did it finally reach 200? And did they give us a starting year? Maybe that is, sometimes they'll say that this whole model, like the 104 bats, was the year 2000. And so in what year would be the year 2022? But they didn't actually give us a starting year, so the best we can do is say, after 22 years. Sometimes they'll say that the model started in 1990. So if you get 22 years of like waiting, you just have to figure out what year that is. 1990 plus 22 years. Good? Okay. Exercise five, a stock has been declining in price at a steady pace of 5%. That gives us the rate of 0 0.05. If the stock started at a price of 22.50, oh, Tess, where's the 22.50? Which variable is that? A sub zero, very good, A sub zero. 2250. Determine algebraically the number of weeks it will take for the price to reach $10. Where's the $10 go? Natalie? Yep, final amount. Okay. And, they, and I, I failed to talk about this when I circled it. 5% per week. So the, the one week is what variable? P. So P equals one week. They want to know the number of weeks it will take for all this to go down. So we'll just start plugging in. A is 10. I'll write this above because it's kind of off the paper. So A is 10, that's your final amount. 2250 was your original amount. 
One is always going to be locked in there. Is it plus or minus? Minus 0 0.05. And T is over one week. So before we start solving, we can clean up some of this. 10 equals 2250. One minus 0 0.05 is what? 0.95 to the t power. Just quickly here to make a connection for you. Do you remember when we were doing um, basic exponential growth and decay? Gosh, was that this class? My class, they're running together. And if the rate was over one, it was growth. And if the rate was less than one, it was decay. Was that this year? Okay. This is where that comes from. Because this formula always starts with one. Because if you multiply by one, you're not growing or decaying. But one plus a number, if you're multiplying by something over one, you're growing. And if you multiply by something under one, you're decaying. So this is 5% below one, which means that kind of brings in that shrinking by 5%. Just a connection. Oh yeah, exponential growth and decay. Over one, less than one, right. Um, Okay, so to solve this, step one, Kate. Good. Now it was 10 divided by 22.5, nice. No, I'm just gonna leave it 10 over 22.5. Good. Uh, Chloe, step two. Yep, good. Olivia, step three. Good. And Morgan, step four. Good. So log of 10 over 22.5 divided by the log of 0.95 equals T. And just type that all in. 10 divided by 22. Divided by the log of 0.95. 15.8. Now, what was 15.8 what? Time was in what in this problem? Weeks. 15.8 weeks. It said the nearest week, so we would say 16 weeks. Go back to the front for me for a second, Lucas Coletta. I have something really fun to show you. And my really fun thing is, real quick question. What's log base four of four? Don't, you don't do that in your calculator. One, because think about this as the base of four to what power will give you four? One. What's log base 8 of 8? 1, right? So if it was log base 8 of 8 to the x power, that would be the x being brought out in front times log base 8 of 8, which would be x times 1, which would just be x, right? Log base 8 of 8 to the x power just ends up being x. Kind of looks like those just cancel right? And whatever the exponent is, it is. So here's why I'm showing you this. If I go to this example again, this entire day, and you can choose to continue doing it that way, but I do want you to be familiar with both, rather than taking just log of both sides, if the base of the exponent that I'm trying to get into is 5, I can actually take log base 5 
of both sides. Because the log base 5 of 5 will seemingly just cancel, and it will just be x equals log base 5 of 18. Is that what I got the first time? Yes and no. It's not the same look, but we know they're equal because of the change of base formula, right? So like on C, if I just wanted to, to do this in almost a quicker step, but you might have to know the change of base formula to get from here to here or to get the decimal version, I can just take log base, what would I take? What's the base of the exponent? 2, so I would take log base 2 on both sides, and then log base 2 of 2 would cancel, and that would be my answer. x equals log base 2 of 1560, and then if necessary, I could do the change of base formula and rewrite that as the log of 1560 over the log of 2. Is that clear? So just a, a different 